علیہ السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعداءهم In the name of God, the compassion of the merciful Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters, respected viewers Welcome to Karbala Welcome to land of Hussein Welcome to land of Abbas I would like to send my deepest condolences to Imam of our time Sahib al-Zaman Ajalallah ta'ala farajuh al-Sharif And all of you dear brothers and sisters for the martyrdom-like occasion and anniversary of Lady Umm al -Banin, mother of Abbas, Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. The lady who had done a lot for Islam and served the commander of faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as best as possible by giving birth to four lions, to four brave lions who protected and sacrificed everything in sake of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the day of Ashura. Here in Karbala, and this night, we are condoling and consoling Imam of our time, Sahib al-Zaman, Ajalallah ta'ala for sharif for this occasion, and Insha'Allah, all of you dear brothers and sisters who are watching this live show will join us to spend our time once again with these great individuals, with Ahl al-Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'i. You may noticed, you may have noticed that we are starting this live show not like all the other shows if you remember i was standing behind the stage and we were all ready to say salam to imam hussein alayhi salam actually this night also we're going to say salam to imam hussein alayhi salam but in addition we've got a guest here in the studio a respectful guest who has passed a long way to be here in karbala and to be Za'ar, a humble Za'ar of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, insha'Allah. You all know him. Brother Mustafa Mas'ud, who, it doesn't need me to introduce him, because as I said, you all know him. So let me welcome this respected guest right here in the studio, and insha'Allah, we will continue the show altogether. Assalamu alaikum brother and alaykum welcome to this salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an honor to be in the holy city of Karbala near the holy shrines of Sayyidi wa Mawlai, my master Imam al Hussein, alayhi afdal al salatu wa salam and his brother Abu al Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam and we start by sending our condolences to the Imam of our time on the demise of Ummul Banin Salamullahi Alayha and we send our condolences to our audience as well as to yourself on this special occasion, this occasion that I am honored to be spending near the dome of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein Salamullahi Alayh and near the dome of Abu Al Fadl Abbas Salamullahi Alayh. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. And inshallah this night is going to be a unique night as we've got you here and actually it is uh, we are uh, condoling we are commemorating this great occasion actually and we are mourning for lady Fatima Umm al-Banin but we have got uh, 
timetable, let's say, or we've got a frame for every show. We've got a schedule, we've got a, uh, some things to do first, and that is saying humble salam to Imam Hussein alayhi salam ala Abbas alayhi salam. So, I would like to ask you to all together, you and I, we stand up on our feet, of say a humble salam to Imam Hussein alayhi salam ala Abbas alayhi salam, alayhi salam. and after that, inshallah, we'll be at your service, inshallah. talking about this great inshallah. lady, inshallah, inshallah. please. Inshallah. يا الله السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا مولاي يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتك السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين Let's say humble salam to مولا أبا الفضل عباس عليه السلام السلام عليك يا مولاي يا قمر بني هاشم السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن فاطمة أم البنين السلام عليك يا كفيل زينب السلام عليك يا قطيع الكفين السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته People may ask that how is it possible for Abel Fazl Abbas alayhi salam to be such a great individual and sacrifice everything in sake of his brother Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam in that great and brave way. So if you look back to the history and how this great individual was born and how he was uprought you will find the answer of your question. This night is night of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam and his blessed mother. This night is night of bravery. This night is night of being between the hands of Imams and being humble in front of them and spending all your time serving them. How is this possible? This is going to be our topic for the discussion that we are going to have tonight with our respected guest, brother Mustafa Mas'ud. And I'm sure that you, dear brothers and sisters, will enjoy it, inshallah. Brother, we're at your service, and I know that you've got things to say to us about Lady Umul Banin and actually about Allah Abbas, alayhi salam, please. Ahsantum, I think further to your introduction um, that tonight we not only remember Umm al-Banin salam Allah alayha but we also remember Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam Allah alayha if we want to understand someone's character someone's personality uh, and study them usually one thing that scholars look at is their lineage their parents and specifically their father and their mother sure. And usually the role of a mother in the upbringing of her children is very important. We have a saying in uh, the Iraqi dialect mm -hmm. and the Arab dialect, when someone does something good, for us to praise him, we say, Rahimallah walidayk. Yeah. May Allah bless your parents. Even though it's the person himself who done something good, not his parents. parents yeah. So why are we saying, Rahimallah walidayk? Why are we sending blessings upon his parents? Usually we're sending this blessing because it was his parents that brought him up in this manner. Sure. 
that gave him this respectful way. When we look at Abu al-Fadl Abbas Babu al-Hawa'ij, and interestingly enough, tonight is also the night of Umm al-Banin, who is also one of the gates of our hajat, also Babil Hawa'ij. Yeah, definitely. Why is this? Because it's that moment of Al-Abbas that we see on the day of Ashura of loyalty, mm -hmm. of standing up for his brother, of being steadfast, of being patient. When you look at the lines of the ziyarat of Al-Abbas, you read the words Mujahid, yeah. Sabir, Wafi, all these words, loyalty, patient, all these stances of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas were instilled by his mother, Umm al-Banin. When we look at one stance of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, that stance that today when it's recited on the 7th of Muharram or on the night that we remember Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas in the 10 nights of Muharram and in the Maqtal on the day of Ashura, that single one stance of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas when he held the water in his hands Allah. and he looked at the water Today, if Al-Abbas had drank the water, for instance, yeah. for argument's sake, let's say Abbas drank the water. No one would have said, why did Abbas drink the water? No one would say, you know, he's thirsty. The Imam says, I believe Imam al-Sadiq says that the heart of my uncle Abbas was burning like a flame because of the thirst. Allah. If he had drank the water, no one would say, why did Abbas drink the water? This is right. Yet Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, out of loyalty for his brother, for his master, Imam al-Hussein sallallahu alayhi dropped the water. This one stance, we can look at the upbringing of his mother, Umm al banin that made sure he has this stance. And we go back in time yeah. when Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi went to his brother Aqil, and Aqil was someone that would be sitting in the masjid mm -hmm. and people would come and ask of the lineage, the nasab of certain peoples yeah. to know their lineages. And sometimes the questions arise, why did Imam Ali ask Aqid? Does Imam Ali not know? Of course, yeah. Imam Ali knows. Of course he knows, yeah. Imam Ali knows all this. He has ilm al he doesn't need to ask Aqid. But, just to but teach us ahsantum, us. ahsantum, Haji Muslim. Imam Ali, Amir al Mu'minin, salamullah alayha, is teaching us that go to the professionals, go to the experts with what you need. So he goes to his brother Aqil, the story is known, and they choose this woman, not just sometimes people say because of the bravery of her family. Mm -hmm. Correct, they had the bravery, they had the courage, but also they had loyalty, loyalty. even before Islam, because Umm al-Banin was born, if I'm not mistaken, in the fourth year after Hijrah. Uh -huh. And her martyrdom, her demise, was on the 64th year after Hijrah. That makes her 60 years old when she passed away. That means she passed away three years after the, the, the events of Ashura. Yeah, and inshallah, we will look at the role of Umm al-Banin sallallahu alayha in the Azadari. Yeah, and in propagating the message of Ahsantum, Imam Hussein alayhi In propagating the message we learn from this, sometimes yeah, sure. this is neglected. The point is, when Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi chose Fatima bint Hizam al kilabiya as his wife, through the instructions of his brother Aqil, before she even went into the house, she told Amir al-Mu'mineen, Salamullah alayhi, I have some terms and conditions. Yeah. You know, sometimes people, when they get married, they put certain terms and yeah. conditions in their marriage uh, for some reason. And these, are she, actually, these, are, these conditions are very hard to fulfill. Ah and you know, you know uh, ah when ah some hears about the conditions, they say, come on, you are getting married with commander of Fifth Ali ibn Abi Talib Hassan, and you are putting and saying that you've got conditions, but let's listen the to conditions, the conditions. What was that? Yes, sometimes they are difficult. And yeah. you, you're talking about Amir al-Mu'mineen as a ma'soom, yeah. infallible, 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 an imam. She doesn't see him just, this is sometimes forgotten when we look at the relationship between Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam and Imam Ali or Fatima al-Zahra alayhi afdal salatu wa sallam and Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi afdal salatu wa sallam. We sometimes forget, we don't just look at the a family relationship. It's not about family relationship. Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi and we remembered her martyrdom a few days ago. She does not just see Imam Ali sallallahu alayhi as her husband. No, she sees him as Imam of al ta'a that she has to respect. Umm al the same thing. So she tells him that these conditions, I want them to be fulfilled. 
And as you mentioned, she's talking to an imam. What are the conditions, Umm al banin She tells him, Amir al muminin I want you not to call me by my name, Fatima. Why, Umm al banin She tells him, because al Hassan and al Hussein, salam Allah alayhi. And most narrations mention that Umm al banin got married to Amir al muminin nearly 10 years after the martyrdom of Fatima al-Zahra. A long, we can say quite a long time, 10 yeah, years. Sure. But she still has this inside her that she tells him i don't want you to call me by my name fatima in case it reminds hassan and hussein and zainab and umu kulthum of their mother fatima and brings them sadness and sorrow Allah. don't call me by my name and when she comes into the house she has also a term and condition for their sons of amir al-mu'mineen she tells them oh hassan oh hussein oh zainab oh umu kulthum I have not come to this house as the wife of your father or to replace your mother. Your no. Mother never. What have you come, Umm al -Banin? Why are you here? I have come to be your servant. Allah. Today, Allah. when someone says, I am Khadim al Hussein, yeah. you want to learn about khidmah? You want to learn about service? That title is not for me. And I speak for myself. That title is given to someone like Umm al -Banin. So when you look at this first, imagine this is a bride coming into her new home and telling the children, even though they were quite old now, we're talking about them in their uh, early uh, 20s or in their teen years, she is telling them, I have not come to be the wife of your father. No. I have come to serve you. I have come to be your, your servant. servant. So imagine this is from the day one she has placed this term and condition yeah. in her. Therefore, when she has her son, Abu al-Fadl Abbas, they are brought up in the same way. Yeah. Abbas, my son, do not call Hussein Akhi. Don't call him my brother. Don't call Hassan and Hussein by their names. Don't call them my brother. What? Call them Mawlai. My master. Sayyidi. My master. Don't call Zainab your sister. Allah. My miss. No. Call her my mistress. Sayyidati. She brought this up. She brought her sons, Abbas and his three brothers, up in this manner. And of course, you know, a lot of the times we mention that, you know, Brothers sometimes from different mothers have issues, have problems sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Even psychologically, scholars of psychology say sometimes brothers from different mothers have different problems. Because, for example, they say they are not from the same rahim. Yeah. Rahim, the word rahma, for example, come from, comes from the word rahim, which is the womb. So they're not from the same womb yeah. of a mother. So sometimes they have difficulty. Some for problems. example, when we look at the Quran and we look at the relationship of Yusuf yeah, and, salam, his, brothers, yeah. and his brothers, except Binyamin, yeah. the other brothers are what? From different mothers. Yeah, they tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. But Abi Abdullah al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas, they broke this. Allah. They broke this that if you are from a different mother, you have. No. You may have conflict. Abu al Fadl al Abbas showed that that loyalty, that bravery for Imam al Hussein which was instilled by his mother, Umm al-Banin alayha afdal salatu wa salam. And he portrayed this on the day of Ashura. And even when we look at uh, the fadila, the merits of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam alayha alayha, unlike his other brothers, there's a special merit for al-Abbas salam alayha alayha. Some narrations mention there were seven brothers of Imam al Imam al Hussein in mm -hmm. the day of Ashura, others say nine, other numbers vary. Either way, there's other brothers of Imam al Hussein from different, obviously, mothers, but the same father. Because the only brother to Imam al Hussein is Imam al Hassan, salam Allah alayhi, full brother. But only al Abbas is mentioned. Number one, a lot of scholars say because maybe he was the oldest. Mm -hmm. And because of his stance, because of his bravery, because of his. Uh, 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 title being the moon of Bani Hashim, the Qamar of yeah. Bani Hashim, and of course, Abi Abdullah Al Hussein, salam Allahi alayhi, gave him the flag. Yeah. And uh, may Allah bless our scholars. They mention a, a story that always shows you the relationship between 
أبا الفضل العباس سلام الله عليه and Imam Al-Hussein through the eyes of Zainab alayha afdal salatu wa salam because again Umm Al-Banin is, is you know when we, when we look at Umm Al-Banin you have to look at Sayyidah Zainab sure. you have sure. to look at Al-Abbas she's that sensor that that has all of all of this around now her now you just named Sayyidah Zainab sallallahu alayha and Umm Al-Banin I just remember the time that the captives returned to Medina mm. And Lady Umul Banin just went to welcome them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Right now, I can't hold myself dropping tears because this scene, this situation is so heartbreaking. Lady Zainab was younger than Lady Umul Banin. Mm. By, the, by the time that they meet each other, Lady Umul Banin doesn't remember her mm. as Allahu Akbar. You see, my dear Haji Mustafa, on the day of the martyrdom of Amir al muminin again, you, you, I, I'm going from topic to topic, I'm reminding different events, but this is the night of Umm al-Banin. Yes. I say this to all my viewers, I say this to myself, don't leave tonight empty-handed. Yeah. Come knocking on the door of Umm al-Banin. Um, don't leave without taking something from Umm al-Banin tonight. Baba. Whether it's with a tear, whether it's with putting a candle for Umm al-Banin. Tonight is the night of giving. Remember Umm al-Banin, salam Allah alayha. On the day of the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayha, alayha, in the 21st of Ramadan, in the 40th year after Hijrah, Amir al-Mu'mineen is giving his will. I will come to the story of Sayyidah yeah. Zainab later. Actually, we've got five or six minutes to the end, but, you know, inshallah. Inshallah, I will try and make both of them. Yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen is giving his will. And he gives his will to Imam al Hassan salam Allah alayhi, and he gives his will to all his other children, and he tells them that your Imam next is Imam al Hassan al Zaki al Mujtaba, Aba Muhammad alayhi, Abdul Salatu wa Salam. But this will is given to everyone except Al Abbas salam Allah. He tells everyone, look after Imam al Hassan. But with Abu al Fadl al Abbas, Umm al Banin sees this, and she comes and she says, Amir al Mu'minin, you forgot my son Abbas. He tells her, I haven't forgotten him. He, his role will come. Absolutely. Then he calls Al Abbas, alayhi. Then he calls Sayyidah Zainab, salam alayhi. Sayyidah Zainab is older than yeah. Al Abbas, salam yeah. Then he brings out the hands of Sayyidah Zainab. Then he brings out the hands of Al Abbas. Then he puts the hands of Zainab, alayhi salam, on the hands of Al Abbas. Then he looks at Abu al-Fadl al Abbas and he tells him, Abbas, yeah. waladi. This is your will. You look after Sayyidah Zainab. Zainab. And that's why on the night of Ashura, the night of the 10th, in the middle of the night, while Imam al Hussein is in dua and prayer, and all the companions are in dua and prayer, there is one person that is protecting the tent. Yeah. Abu al Fadl Abbas Qamar Bani Hashim is protecting the tent. He is on his horse. Yeah. Suddenly, Abu al Fadl has some steps mm -hmm. behind him. Yeah. He turns around. He sees his beloved sister, Sayyidah Zainab. As soon as he sees Sayyidah Zainab, he wants to come off his horse. Sayyidah Zainab tells him, no, stay on your horse. Stay where you are. I want to see your might, the haiba of you on your horse. She knows maybe tomorrow he's not going to Allah be there. Then she tells him the story. She tells him, Abbas, my father, Amir al muminin married your mother, Umm al banin because of because Ashura. Of day, you are for this day. That's why Abbas takes his sword and he shows his bravery and he tells her, Sayyidah Zainab, I know I am for this day. So therefore, all of these attributes of Al-Abbas that we see of loyalty and courage and, and sabr, patience, yeah. they're all from who? From his, his mother, mother, Umm al-Banin, that Salam instilled Allah. and she told him, she told him, Abbas, Hassan and Hussein and Zainab are the sons of Fatima Fatim. bint Muhammad. While you are the sons of Fatima bint Hazam. There's a difference. Don't ever think you. And he instilled this. He protected his brother, Abi Abdullah al Hussein, salamullahi alayhi, binafsihi. As Imam al Sajjad alayhi salam says, Lakad Athar, binafsihi, Ammi al Abbas. With his self, with his eyes, with his hands, with every single part of his body, with every cell because of the installment, the upbringing of his mother, Umm al-Banin. Therefore tonight, 
when we remember Umm al banin we must also remember Abu al al Abbas, and we must come knocking on the door of Umm al banin for our hajat. Mashallah. Thank you so much, Mashallah. And I can add, if you Please. let me, and respect Please. brothers and sisters, that the best clue of how much ladies uh, Umm al banin <coughs> Salamullah alayha, had respect towards Commander of Faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is his son Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. If you would like to know that how much she was respectful towards Commander of Faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, look at his son Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam, how much he was respectful towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam, how much he was respectful towards Lady Zainab salamullah alayha. And if you would like to know that how much Commander of Faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam liked Lady Umm al Banin salamullah alayha, look at Imam Hussein alayhi salam, how much he liked his brother Abu al Fadl Abbas alayhi salam when he said, Erkab bin Afsi and. This night is night of Abu al Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. We also in Arabic say that uh, the person who holds the uh, the morning, you know, the the uh, person who uh, has got the morning, the morning, he is the master of the morning, we, we call it, you know, mm -hmm. and in Arabic we say Sahib al Aza, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Abu al Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam this night. So we send our deepest condolences to him and. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put, to put us in the path of Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi wa majma'in not to uh, let us and not to let Satan to mislead us out from this path. And inshallah, all of us be true followers of Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salam alayhi wa majma'in. Hajina, brother Mustafa Mas'ud, this night is a very unique night as I said. And actually what you said was really great you mentioned the bullet points of the uh, history of lady Umm al and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas in a very very short time and I appreciate it I would like you to take the last honor to perform a dua to say something as the last sentence for this night so this will be the final words and final sentence of this show for this night we firstly inshallah I will be after visit uh, this, this visit to the studio inshallah I will be inshallah making my way to the holy shrines of Al Abbas salamullah alayhi and Imam Al Hussein salamullah alayhi and I dedicate my ziyarat to all our viewers to all the viewers of Imam Hussein TV inshallah so on their behalf inshallah I will be performing the ziyarat of Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas salamullah alayhi and the ziyarat of Imam Al Hussein alayhi afdal salatu wassalam the most important dua when it comes to dua is the dua of the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited savior if you have someone married sick if you have a problem in your life if you have a worldly problem wealth problem a seer whatever mushkila whatever problem you have it will be solved through the faraj of imam al hujjaj allah ta'ala faraj al sharif so if you allow me i will recite dua al faraj بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشفي صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة Thank you so much for tuning in. May Allah bless you and Labbaika Ya Hussein.